Hey guys, Kamina the coach here. Sorry for the awkward angle of the phone. Sorry about that. I'm driving to work like always. <laughs> I've been thinking about this topic for a long time. I'm gonna jump right in because I'm about halfway to work, so I wanna get it all out. I wanna talk today about It's Not You. This channel has been dedicated recently and since March of 2020 to childhood trauma and adoption trauma. Adoptees, your adoptive parents crap was not about you. Your relinquishment was not about you. Anything that happened to you before let's say 13 was not your fault had nothing to do with you 13 you're starting to recognize that you have compassion and empathy and all that stuff but before then you're not even cognitively developed you're supposed to be somebody's responsibility and whatever they did or didn't do is not your fault they didn't love you or hug you the way that you needed. They didn't, they beat you. They talked horribly to you. They neglected you. They exposed you to microaggressions or just straight up racism. It wasn't about you. So this is part of why I think reunion for, for adoptees is really important. Even if you're not interested in knowing your first family, it's really good to know your story and, and specifically about these people that took part in creating you. Um, <clears throat> finding out that my dad was a big, huge mess and that my mom was a big, huge mess, but just in the opposite direction really helped me put into perspective why I got relinquished. Um, and, and to be fair, there was no place I could have been placed in either family that was particularly or was going to give me what I think at this point in my life that I needed growing up as a child. So that family wasn't going to work. The family that adopted me didn't work. Well, why? What was wrong with them? Well, my father, who was part of the adopted couple, didn't ever know his father. He had the last name of a man, as far as I know, he had never even met. We never talked about that. I think people talking, and especially talking to your parents, I think is a new thing. Parents telling you their, their secrets and stuff. I grew up in an era, my, so my parents are baby boomers. Both sets of parents are baby boomers. And uh, we don't talk about feelings, emotions, past, all that stuff is secret, it's quiet, it's hush hush. Let's not talk about that. So I do, I just do know though, that the man who I called grandpa was not his dad. So a whole set of issues with that. Um, my adoptive mother was the golden child. Um, though my grandmother, her mother was very loved. I'm, I'm not sure how much my mother was getting love at home. She, I remember hearing her lamenting about, oh, y'all think she's so sweet, but you don't know how she was as a mom. And I don't know how much of that is, is true or not. I know she was considered the golden child um, and obviously was not. <laughs> and so she carried a lot of pressure on her shoulders. I'm not sure honestly um, what her relationship was like with her sister other than a lot of ad adversarial type stuff my, my, my adoptive mother's sister is really or at least I thought really beautiful and they were very opposite my adoptive mother was, was dark haired she had light eyes but she, she dark haired and darker skin a little bit and then her sister was the blonde <clears throat> Barbie style and I wanted to be her wore her heels all the time and hair and makeup and all that stuff and, and my adoptive mother was not that and so I think that that caused her a lot of stress and distress as well um, as far as I know according to her she married somebody she didn't want to marry to make somebody else jealous um, and he cheated on her a lot in the early years of their marriage he cheated on her a lot one of his girlfriends 
started driving a school bus on my route just to get close. It's crazy. So, yeah. Mom and dad had a lot of issues. Adopted mom and dad had a lot of issues. And none of that crap was about me. I had lunch with um, somebody yesterday and we had a discussion and she's not adopted. And um, it was Father's Day yesterday and we had a discussion about, you know, her parents were in town and was she concerned about going? She's like, we're just not that close. And she gave me some of her background. And I'm just like, and that was what solidified the idea of doing this video. It's not about us. It's not about us, at least, like I said, up to a certain age, especially infant, toddler, adolescent. That was never about us, and it was not our fault. And probably, if you get to an age where you're able to have some compassion, your parents weren't loved the way that you want to be loved either. So how do you love when you have not been shown how to love nobody waves a magic wand and and just knows how to parent It'd be nice if that was the case but it's not <laughs> there's no one to wave a magic wand with instant love and it's possible that we get into parenthood because women have been told since the beginning of time that we have to have children to be worthy of anything who's to say that you don't get that baby and figure out that parenting wasn't for you it's not for everyone that is societally programmed thing it's not for everyone and being mad about something over which you had no control is such a waste of energy it's such a waste of energy it's um a waste of an opportunity for you to be thriving instead of just surviving. It's pointless <clears throat> to hang on to that anger. Likewise, you know, <laughs> if someone is treating you badly in this life as an adult, it's probably not your fault. It's probably about things going on inside of them. Although, you might be filtering stuff through, a tr through trauma. So you might be playing into that saga, but ultimately this video is about what happened to you as a child was not your fault. And how do we come to that conclusion? I think it's really important to do our best to try to understand where the people that raised us came from. And in understanding where they came from and what kind of life they had or didn't have, really really is going to help you understand why you got or didn't get get what you got when you were growing up and I just think that that's really important and it is really I think a travesty for those who are not able to find their biological family so they can get their story because you kind of spend all that time wondering why what was what was wrong with me? I, I think that that is the question. I don't think that there is an adoptee alive, even if they were, if even if they had good parents. I don't think there's an adoptee alive who hasn't at some point in their life said, why me? People who have suffered a lot of childhood trauma as well, I think it's easy to slide into that. Why me? What did I do? You didn't do anything. You didn't. You didn't do anything. There's nothing wrong with you. You didn't do anything. It's not your fault. It's not about you. It's about the love that they didn't get, the way that they weren't provided for. It's not about you. It's not. It's not about you. And the sooner you come to a place in your life where you're able to accept that it wasn't about you, um, the quicker you're going to find a sense of peace, um, a sense of stillness, and a way to kind of flush out that deep-seated anger, which is probably just grief that has never had an opportunity to express itself. 
So if you've been like me, somebody who's been angry for a long time, you gotta find a way to, even if you're able to come to a place of understanding that it wasn't about you, it's really important that you take some time to purge yourself of that anger. Ceremonial card cutting ceremony, go burn some something, write a letter to the people that hurt you when you were a child and burn it. Find a way to let it go. So go, go, to, go to the countryside, go to the desert, scream it out. Whatever you've got to do, get that crap out of you and let it go. <sighs> let it go. So I don't usually do this, but I would just like to today. This is my normal every morning routine. I'm going to do a little meditation um, just to share with you what I do every morning. And it really works for me. Um, this is a really deep topic. So maybe you need to get some of that negativity out of your body. So close your eyes if you can. If not, that's fine. Um, comfortable seated position or laying down. Deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. One more time, in through your nose, fill it all up. Out through your mouth. Now picture a cord coming through the crown of your head. And as you take that next deep breath, send that cord through your spine, out your tailbone into the center of the earth and wrap it around the core. So inhale in, send that cord down, send it down your spine, out your tailbone down to the core and wrap it around the core. Now, now you're grounded and connected to the earth. Next breath in, see a cloud of golden and silver light above your head and breathe all of that light into your body. In through your nose. Breathe in that light, let it flow down through your arms, through your chest, abdomen, through your legs. Breathe out. One more time, breathe in that gold and silver light. Let it flow through your body. Now this time when you breathe in, I want you to amplify that light, make it go bright. All of that light that you've breathed in inside of you, make it go bright and as it goes bright, it's going to diffuse all of that anger inside of you. And when we breathe out, we're going to send it to the core of the earth. So breathe in, magnify that light, feel it glow, let it burn all that negative stuff out. And when you breathe out, send it to the core of the earth. Again, <clears throat> this time when you breathe in, let that light burn, let it ignite and burn all that negative energy and when you exhale, exhale that negative energy into the core, in through your nose. Let that light ignite. And when you blow it out, blow out all that negativity into the core. All right, one more time in through your nose, let your light burn. And then send all that neg negative energy to the core on your exhale. All right, shake it off. Pull your, with your next inhale, pull your cord in. Your next inhale, push that light out around you as a shield. Inhale in, magnify that light, push it out. One more time when we breathe in and we breathe out, we're gonna fortify our shield of gold and silver light. Now, just to protect you, because shining too bright freaks some people out, 
we're gonna put a dusting of gray over the top to protect ourselves a little bit more. So just imagine a big powder puff and puff some gray around you. Open your eyes, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm the Kamina, the coach, sending you love, light, peace, and joy. Until next time.